to the cloud so that we can get this on YouTube. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Siobhan. Uh, you have found yourself in our space here at Ask Me Anything, brought to you by Edge Studio. We have been doing this for three years and counting uh, to the point where I actually have no idea what episode it is. I join you personally from London for the first time, which means it is 2 a.m. for me. So you all have seen me in the morning. You've seen me in the evening. <laughs> And now it's officially a party at the middle of the night, and uh, we are having quite the international experience tonight where I am not the only person um, tuning in, not from the United States. Uh, before I introduce our special guest, the first thing I want to say is just hello and welcome and thank you for being us, being here with us. And if you want to holler about where you are at in the chat, okay, we've got Tokyo, we've got North Carolina, we've got Missouri, Terry, my fellow star in maryland well actually kind of dc area multiple brazilians what's up cesar uh and i want to introduce if you haven't met him yet our chief edge officer here at edge studio david goldberg how you doing i'm doing fine siobhan for anyone who is tuning in to their first ask me anything siobhan is quite different tonight you're really <laughs> slower when it's two in the morning you, you don't have the same like you're still awesome we all think the world of you but you don't have that high energy. It's really interesting. Oh, uh, cool. So you're getting my evening kind of radio voice. Yeah. I know really your voice Your voice sounds different, which is cool. Like you have the uh, the right voice now for like an erotica audiobook. It's like kind of smooth <laughs> and silky. David, what time is it for you? We are getting, it's 2 a.m. everywhere. <laughs> 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Uh, for yes. some of us. But I've also got, okay, we've got hello from the DMV. What's up? All right. Um, so we've got David Goldberg and y'all, if you haven't met them, I was really hyped. These folks are my dear friends. And in fact, we are even in-person friends because we did meet at a voiceover conference, IRL. Um, but if you haven't met them yet, I'm really excited for you to be here with them. They're so super special. And um, it's wonderful that we're all in this space together in multiple countries. Simone and Jason, hello. And how are you two? Wow. Wow lovely voice yeah i didn't know this was an erotic audio no, voice no. <laughs> oh, oh, i think we, we i think oh. we clicked on the wrong link no no it's about, it's about ai oh AI. okay, we okay. Are AI. Good, yeah okay. yeah <laughs> ai is the opposite of audio erotica but anyway so <laughs> so y'all um simone and jason join us from brazil and uh as i like to do if you've been here with us previously with our special guests um I would like for you two to just give us a little intro of yourselves and your world and experience and career in voiceover and how you ended up, how you, uh, Siobhan After Dark, that's right, Terry, how you ended up here specifically in this Zoom room with Siobhan and David <laughs> at 10 p.m. your time. Let's go. Great question. Start with you, Dave. <laughs> well, I'm Okay, I'm from California. I'm an American. We, uh, Simone is Brazilian, and I've lived in Brazil for 20 years. And we met working in television about, you know, I guess almost 20 years ago now. Yeah. And Simone was on camera, and she brought me into the voiceover community, and it just really boomed. America, you know, English voiceover, I do a lot of talks about the international market as well. It's, it's a big market all around the world. And lately, Simone's been speaking in a lot of technology events she's a speaker at south by southwest we uh go to you know the, a lot of the trade shows we're kind of got our we're real tuned into what's happening with technology and this is something that we've been doing with edge studio for for several years now yeah so i'm about voice actors uh since i'm nine years old here in brazil and then i I study, I'm a voice actor. Uh, this is our studio, Jay, afterwards, if yeah, you yeah. can show them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you showed already here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we record here for all around the world. I'm a coach at Ed Studio. I love that. And I love work with you, you know that. And I learn a lot, a lot, always. And I have, uh, um, I study a lot about technology. So I founded the... Um, the Brazilian Extended Reality Association. I'm, uh, I'm, I was the vice president until last week, and now I'm uh, part of the board member, but I'm one of the co-founders, co and I'm president of the committee of Metaverse Games and XR at EIB, AIB Brazil, and 
lead ambassador for women in voice. So I we I love technology and voice and art and how they can be related and how can we take advantage of the technology uh, in our favor. So that's that's why we are here, Siobhan. Um, absolutely perfect. And uh, if you weren't intimidated by Simone already, um, now you all ought to be. <laughs> I am uh, in a good way, though. It's like that warm intimidation. Um, okay, so with that, um, these two are already, as I've said, amazing. And it's wonderful that we're all here together. And um, I'm going to kick it back over to David. And David, do you want to just, you know, we're actually, this is kind of a cool night, y'all, because we're going to talk about something. We're here with a topic. Um, and David, do you want to intro like what we're doing here um, tonight? Absolutely. Uh, first, let me say that Simone and Jason, I think are, they're not, um, <laughs> I think they haven't communicated how amazing they really are. They are both so well-versed in voiceover. They're both so busy. They're full-time working voice actors. They're ranked so high in the country and internationally. They do such great work and it's always a pleasure working with them. And uh, jumping then to tonight's topic, it is AI. And what's interesting is there is so much talk out there about AI, and rightfully so, right? It's 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 new. It's happening so fast, and it's and it's changing so quickly. And I don't think anyone really knows what's next. And there is there's a lot of fear in our voiceover industry. And uh, you know, uh, I own the studio. We have five studios in New York City, you know, all in one, one facility. And there's always the question as to, wow, what's going to happen with the future of voiceover uh, and voice actors and my business? And I will say up front that I'm not concerned, not concerned in the least. I've had lots of talks with lots of people and I've come to just a couple of quick conclusions. And I like to kind of talk about these very briefly and then get to some Q&A. Certainly, AI voices are being used. No doubt they're being used. But I don't think that it's taking away the vast majority of the work that voice actors want or studio owners want. In other words, voiceover or rather AI is being used in a lot of the low-end work out there and uh, perhaps work on Fiverr.com or uh, sites like that. And that's, uh, to call it the bottom feeder work is I think too strong of a negative word to use, but it's often the, the kind of work that I think voice actors last want because the more highly paid jobs are still going to voice actors. And I do believe uh, that they will continue to, to be that way. And we'll talk about that throughout the evening. I also think that AI voices are being used in applications where voice actors would never have been hired. And this came to me uh, some time ago. There's a company that I work with. I, I work with the people who, sorry, I work with the voice actor for a company. And this guy works at the company as a coder. He's not a voice actor, but they have him do record all of their training videos. And he came to me to get a little coaching. And he doesn't want to become a voice actor. His company has him record these training videos. Now, this company would never, ever hire a voice actor. I tried to sell them on going voice actors with professional voice actors. And he said, our company won't do it. We're not going to pay money for voice actors. We can have someone like me, someone in the office, just read the stuff. It costs us nothing. Now, they are using AI voices now, but that's not taking away work from voice actors because that company would never have hired a voice actor. So AI voices are being used, but I don't believe they're being used in such a way that it's going to damage our industry. And the voiceover industry continues to grow. There still are more applications all of the time. So I think that the type of work that we have may shift a bit, but I think that we'll be left with more upper end and higher end work. Um, we invited Simone and Jason because they know so much about this topic. And we thought that this would be a great topic for our Ask Me Anything. Yeah. Um, Jason and Simone, if, if if you don't mind, I guess first, I, not starting as a counterpoint to David, but can we talk a little bit about the fear? Like we were mentioning before the, the show began. Um, you, and I think people probably feel it, but if people are wondering what the heck is going on, if can we first speak to like some of the fear that people are feeling and that our community is experiencing about this? And then maybe some of your response to that as well. Yes, thank you for this uh, great um, explanation about the topic, Dave. Um, yeah, the fear 
is not only uh, inside our voiceover community, is all the creators, because uh, with the chat GPT, Dolly, and all this generative AI, uh, people are starting to lose, um, it's, it's not lose jobs, but lose um, job descriptions. I, I heard this in, um, in, in South by Southwest and I like this because we have to change the way we work, the change, the, the, our abilities and capabilities. So I think uh, we should be aware about the, the, the techno, about the, the, the challenges, the threatenings, and in order to take advantage of this and turn the, the, the thing in, in a good point, in a good way. If you, if I don't speak, uh, because it's so late here and my <laughs> English, I wake with a great English in the morning, afternoon, I'm fine, but 10 o'clock, sometimes my English does not okay. So Jason, help me. Okay. I think you're doing great. Okay. Okay. She's flawless. She's yeah. flawless. No, yeah. I'm getting <laughs> thumbs up. You're getting affirmative nods. You, you get, yeah, everybody. <laughs> but if you don't understand anything, just ask me again, you know, and I, I, I explaining, I talk in Portuguese, I speak in Portuguese and Jay can translate. Amazing. But yeah, a lot of people are afraid, all the artists and copywriters and designers and producers and directors, everybody's is, is frightening now. And, and if I may simplify that, that fear, basically the concern, and I think everybody here might agree, the concern is like, will I lose my job, right? Like is voiceover over for me because a robot will take my job, right? Yeah. yeah. A quick thought to that. So because we at Edge, like we have a, a big casting and production department. And so we hire voice actors and we have clients who direct the voice actors. And there are so many elements to the human voice, that authenticity of the human voice, the characteristics that are conveyed through our speech, um, the variation of timing and pacing and comedic pauses, dramatic pauses, our pitch variation, our, I don't know, there's so many elements to our speech. And when clients uh, our, our hiring voice actors, they very often give direction, right? I'm sure you've all seen scripts when the client says, emphasize this word, we want you to slow down here, add a little bit more humor there. When you use an AI voice, it may not sound 100% authentic off the bat. Um, but even if it, one day the, that human voice is absolutely 100% uh, authentic sounding, the client can't easily change the voice like you can't tune in slow down a little bit here add a bit of a dramatic pause there we would just want a, a condescending tone here maybe a bit more snarky on this word like that that's really hard to do with an ai voice and even and here's my the thing what i think it comes to this even if one day each to each word can be in, individually tuned to exactly like precisely what the the client wants it will take so long to do that that I think it'll just be so much faster with a human voice actor who brings that spontaneity, the human characteristic to it. And so, I don't know, I feel I'm okay. I feel pretty comfortable. Um, we just signed our lease in New York City again, like about, well, a number of months ago, like six months ago. So we're there. I, I feel pretty good about the, the state of the business, at least for the unforeseeable future. So, yeah, go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> kind of building on what David and, and Simone have been saying, for, starting with Simone, I think that this idea of change is really important. I think a lot of fear comes from change. And one of the advantages of having been in the market for so long is we've seen so many changes already. You know, we, I mean, there was a time when people were starting to build home studios and production companies were really afraid of that. It was like suddenly, you know, we have no purpose. Or, you know, everyone was talking about virtual assistants or people were talking, you know, somebody's part of this whole metaverse idea. So technology always brings these changes. And one of the good things about AI is like Sony was saying, it's affecting everybody. It's not just the voiceover community. So a lot of the, a lot of times what is happening is even our clients who are working at a job, doing whatever they do are afraid of AI for some reason, they're worried about it too. 
And so what we've been trying to do is really focus on the human angle of, of good client relations. And an, ex, an example of this the other day was we got a job where uh, the company, we were on Zoom with them and we had the agency and we had the production company. And the production company had used AI, a virtual voice, to do the scratch track. And they said, well, we don't want that for the, the, the end product because they want something that sounds more human. And we realized that the agency, you know, the script writer was so worried about chat GBT taking his job that he was really focused on doing a good job with his script. And like David was saying, he, he, he was very specific about how he wanted to read. And back like two years ago, that would have bothered me. I was like, just let me do my job. But now I'm like, no, no. Okay. Yeah. How, how would you like that to sound? Because I know that's something that I can do that they're not going to be able to do with a virtual voice. So or you know, at just least make, it will be so difficult, so much harder, and so right? Hard and not it's going. The result is not going to be the same. And so, in that sense, it's made us. It's improved the way we're we're dealing with our clients. And so I, that's one thing we always try to focus on when these changes come and when and when we're afraid of things. Right away, look for ways that can improve your service, improve what you're offering your clients. And uh, tell them uh, the, your ter- theory that I think is very nice about. Everybody can speak, but not everybody can be a voice actor. And yeah, I mean that's something that very smart. That's something David talks about a lot too. Is you know we we worry about AI taking our jobs, but I mean AI is trying to trying to get to the point where it can actually convince you that it's a human. But even if it could convince you that it's human, that doesn't mean it's going to be a, a good actor. You know, because acting is all about emotion. It's all about subtext. It's all about understanding what you're trying to, the message that's under there and who you're talking to and so again you know maybe this is an opportunity instead of worrying about ai invest some money in acting classes or improv or whatever just get better at what you're doing and offer things that you know the ai can't offer acting is reacting acting is uh it involves the whole body ai doesn't have a body and you as a voice actor you know that we don't record like uh, we d- we don't record like this. We record with the whole body, you know. The voice is an instrument, but we use the whole body. We are actors, and AI doesn't have a body. It's this have the sounds and a soul. So, yeah, I'm I'm passionate about this, <laughs> as you can notice. Simone, are you saying that AI stands for actor instrument? <laughs> acting instruments that's a great um, approach, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting yeah i've never thought about that it's... actor's instrument um yeah so siobhan i've seen some interesting questions popping up on the chat do you want to take some sure yeah i mean the chat actually feels pretty comment heavy to me in in this moment um i mean i definitely have one from ellen saying i think Oh, well, this is just a, this is a more personal for, um, for S and J, as we're saying tonight. I love it. Ellen, thank you. Some voiceover niches are more susceptible to be taken over by AI than others, Ellen feels. Um, uh, um, S and J, do you mind telling us what niches you kind of work in, in the voiceover world and how, yeah, how it's been impacting you in that way? Sure. Okay. I'll, I'll go with that. Well, before I answer the question, I think one thing that we should keep in mind when we talk about AI is there's a lot of there's a lot of ways that AI is used in 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 audio production. And we, you know, often when we say AI, we're kind of indirectly referring to to synthetic voices. But for example, I've been playing around a lot with altered AI, which is an opportunity to use your acting and change your own voice. And so, for example, we do a lot of institutional videos, which in a sense could be an area that AI, a, a synthetic voice would be kind of a kind of encroaching on my my jobs because, you know, an institutional corporate video is just basically saying what the company is. But now I'm able to do I'm able to insert, for example, if they have a testimonial and they just have one or two lines and they want it to sound like it's a worker saying it, I'm not very good at changing my voice. So I've been using Altered AI to just do these little testimonials that change my voice to another voice. And it's improved my acting because I'm I'm trying to figure out how other people would, what intonation they would use and all of that. So that, in that sense, I've been working more because of AI. So we are, you know, we work in all fields of voiceover. And I, you know, I don't know. I mean, with audiobooks, that 
that they they say that's something that Simone just published uh, was part of a book that was published this week in Brazil, and they're talking about developing it as an audio book. And we're worried that they're going to use a synthetic voice, but it's all about these women that wrote this book, and and it just makes so much more sense to use the authors or a female voice. And and we hope that the publishing company will understand that. I'm not going to allow them. If there you go. To me, no, because mm-hmm. come on, especially you know this book has a lot of soul and and honest and true stories. You know, you have to to have emotion. You have to you have to connect to your audience. Uh, we went to a voiceover conference last December in Los Angeles, and I went to a audio, audio description panel because they are using AI a lot in audio description. And uh, how 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 can I say not blind the blind and with uh, Basha Vision. Oh yeah, people that have difficulty people seeing. To, to see or or blind people, uh, they the, uh, they were telling uh, in in this conference that for them is this they think that's disrespectful, you know, audio description, and because it interrupts, it disconnects the content, you know, you, they are involved in the content, and then the audio description catch their attention to a bad thing, and so they are asking. Uh, they they prefer not to see, to, to not to see to 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 watch this uh, content because of the AI voices that are disturbing them. So imagine this with audio description, but imagine this with audio book. It's so Jason, difficult audio book to connect. Jason, you mentioned AI being incorporated into one of your gigs. Do you mind unpacking a little bit of what? what that was for us so we understand like well it started out as sort of an experiment because i was um i was i was playing around with respeech or altered ai these new things that are coming out and just kind of getting a sense of what they could do you know how because we work a little bit with music as well and it seemed like a very musical idea that you were i like the fact that you were using your acting skills as a as a foundation to build on and because of what it does is it takes your read and it and it very realistically makes it sound like a different voice. And they're working on giving you accents. They're working on, you know, being able to make your voice sound younger, older. It's it's very, there's a lot of tweaks you can do with it. And for me, one of the early jobs that I did is one of my my companies, and I'm all this is really important. I'm always very transparent about when I use these these services and I pay for them because these actors that are signed up on these services are getting paid. So I'm very specific about making sure that, you know, it's all done correctly. But I actually, for the first time, recorded a a corporate video as the female and the male. I kind of did it against myself and they loved it. And I don't know if they loved it. I thought it sounded really good. And and I think a lot of people want to use this sort of thing uh, because it's new and it's exciting and it shows they're kind of got their finger on on the pulse of technology, but they weren't confident enough to use the synthetic voice because they knew that that was not going to do justice to what they wanted to do. So they hired me, but I did two voices. But that brought up a lot of ethical questions. You know, I felt like, well, am I taking away somebody's job doing this? I charged for it. I charged two voices because mm-hmm. I was paying for the service. And, some, and just to wind up real quick, what I learned from like for example, Altered AI, it's just like working with music. I had to like record five takes. I had to listen for the best take because some of them didn't sound right. Then I had to go back and tweak a couple words and re-record them. So it took me so much longer. It would have been so much easier just to record with a a female talent. But I was curious. I wanted to see where it would go and it sounded good, but it took a lot of work to get there. So Um, I've got uh, my friend, Tim. Tim, it's great to see you. Glad you're here. Um, saying, I hear AI voices all the time and can easily pick them out. How does one talk to someone running, say, a YouTube channel? Like, for instance, we all pitch our talents. We should be. I need to be doing it more. We all could probably be doing it more, you know, pitching ourselves to clients to to book our gigs. And so if you're talking to someone running a YouTube channel, how do you let them know how a real voice could enhance their product? Like, you know, how do we have these conversations with our clients? David, any ideas on that? Yeah, I wouldn't call them clients. I would call them potential clients. I would, if it's <laughs> if there's a YouTuber 
and they're putting out podcasts or YouTube channel or any podcast or even a, a publication company putting out audiobooks, but with uh, artificial voices, I would contact them and say, look, you know, it doesn't sit well with me. The, the voice doesn't sound natural. You probably will find that you lose your, your, your clients, your member, your listeners uh, will drop. Truly, at least for myself, I will say that when I listen to something like a YouTube channel, even if it's a, I don't know, like a do-it-yourself video on YouTube that someone put together with it with an AI voice, it just sounds so unnatural to me. Like I, I tune out. Like it doesn't hold my listening engagement and. So um, anyway, I would contact that company and say, let me give you a before and after. You know, let me transcribe 30 seconds of your video and I'll give it to you in the human voice and listen to the difference, you know. Um, and you might get some clients as a result. I think, you know, it's it's new technology and I think it's giving it's giving certain people out there the ability to add voiceover to their product without having to pay for it. Like I said, in the opening of this, this uh, discussion, there are companies that would never, never, would never have hired a voice actor. They don't have the budget or they don't want to spend the money on it. Now they have the opportunity to have voiceover without spending money on it, but it sounds bad and it might actually do them more of a disservice. So, and, and still, this is all such new technology. It's going to take a while for everything to settle. But like Jason said nicely earlier, We've had in, in this world so many times of new technologies come out, and this is a big technology, but there have been other big technologies that have come out and jobs change, but there's still work out there. There still is. Yeah. Jason or Simone, do you, do you all have thoughts on this potential client outreach? And I think what uh, David said was brilliant, uh, comparing, you know, showing, showing, ha uh, have the opportunity to show the difference. And, and hope that the client uh, feels because uh, some people that are so used to synthetic voice that they don't have the sense that we have. So I think um, we can educate the audience too. They're so used to synthetic voice in TikTok and in other social media. And I think uh, as Jason told, we have to excel we have to be the best version that we can be and show the talent you know <laughs> and and defend our our profession yeah we have to defend like david said and like i told the the lady that was uh, she she wrote in the in the in the um, the group okay i i want to do the um, audiobook and then i instantly contact her i said hi hello i'm i'm part of i'm a member i'm a writer um so what are you thinking about uh you're not going to use a synthetic voice okay <laughs> so just, okay i was i was i was very it wasn't like this but i had this conversation i'm on i'm one of the authors so in this situation i had power to to contest but i think David approach is, is fantastic. Yeah, it's really important for me, at least, not to be defensive about new technology. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. that when you come to somebody and you and you're just open and and say, "Look, I love technology. Yeah, I, I, you know, this is this is helping me. I'm growing. Mm -hmm. And what is it that you want to do with your channel? Is is you do you simply want people to understand what words you're saying? Is it is it simply just data that they're you're just passing them information? It'll work great. I can help you. I can turn you on to some sites that can do that, maybe some voices. But if what you're looking for is an emotional connection or if what you're looking for is to kind of drive home your brand message, then maybe we could take a different approach. But it's not I'm against it. It's just yeah. like what do you want, you know, what's your end goal here? Do you and want engagement? Yeah. And I was literally talking to my partner about this today, about how basically one of the content pillars for almost all corporations at this point, businesses and is community, right? Like community is a big, like a uh, principle right now in marketing today. And unless we're talking about maybe Star Wars, community usually involves people. It's, you know, community of robots, maybe in Star Wars, but like, <laughs> Right. Like, if, so when you're talking, Jason, that's such a salient way of putting it of like, you know, um, how can we learn and grow from, from these modern technologies? And also like, 
what is it that we bring to the table as voice actors, emotion, human connection, you know, the ability to reach the communities that our clients, you know, want to engage with. Um, so many questions to, to go off of. Uh, okay. I want to talk about Heather's one, cause I want to go back to the fear. Cause I think it's important. Um, can we address the fear that technology can steal a voice and replicate it in a way that might harm a voice actor's image or that their own voice where, you know, they're not getting paid anymore because their voice has been like ripped by a robot. Um, do we, let's, let's start with Jason and Simone this time. If either of you have a, a thought about that. Well, I'm curious to see what you think about this, but when we were at a conference recently, um, I was talking to Scott Brick, who's a, who's a well-known audiobook narrator, and he was telling the story of somebody that had taken his voice, because he has so much material out there, and it's really easy with audiobooks, because you have no background sound, to just put, put that into you know a, a, a synthesizer and have his voice replicated. And that happened to him, and he, and he found out about it. And he got angry, and not angry, but it, 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 it concerned him, so he had his agent reach out and find I'm, I'm paraphrasing so but what happened in the end is that the person who had done this was actually a person that loved his work was a big fan of his and had difficulty um he wanted what he wanted to do was hear scott's work on all sorts of you know all sorts of things not just in books but he wanted to read the news with scott's voice and and do different things with scott's voice and so what he did is he just he just basically said, look, you can't do that. And the guy took it down and, and, and he resolved it very diplomatically. But when you have a well-known voice like that, I think it you it, it's a lot easier to prove that that's your voice. Um, with Simone, for example, we've you know, we, we've talked about it's easier to do in English. This isn't something that that's so available in Portuguese yet. Yeah, but I have a friend in Brazil. I don't know if I understand right the question, so help me with this. Please, I have a friend that she, um, she, oh, thank you. Look, uh, this is, this. I, I wrote, this is Jason's picture, but I, I was writing here. <laughs> but this is Jason's Zoom because we are in the same room, but I, I wrote for you, to you. So uh, she, she was, um, new in the the job in the the market in the voiceover market and then she did a gig for a brazilian company and then they say oh it's for education they always say oh it's for education um corp education right mm -hmm. yeah but it wasn't and her voice is being used in oh my gosh everywhere here everywhere every social media, everything. And she didn't receive uh, uh, a real or a dollar. She's not being paid. And the point is, she didn't know the market. She worked with people that wasn't. And she didn't read the fine print. You know, that's that's reading these these contracts that you sign especially nowadays where you just click on a DocuSign contract and you just think it must be okay. Don't do that. You know, really, it, really, really read the fine print. And if you're not comfortable with it, say no. Hire a lawyer. Now she's spending a lot of money with lawyers now, but she's, there's nothing she can do. But so spend a little bit or spend money with lawyer before signing the uh, uh, contract that can um, make your voice go everywhere. No riots, no, no anything. So, mm. Mm. yeah, it's we we are seeing a lot of a uh, uh, recent movement movement with a lot of uh, websites that are changing the the ways they how they they deal with the um, AI voices. Yeah, it is good. And Simone is involved with uh, has been involved with like Vocal ID for many years, and so the we see that there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes with people who really understand both sides of it and her making an effort to, to use this technology for good. So. Mm, mm. David, any thoughts on this or do you feel fairly covered? Covered. <laughs> covered. Yep. Word. I thought so. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. So I, yeah, I mean, I'll just say that I, again, I think the, the, 
and in the chat, by the way, if people aren't um, reading the chat, people are sharing some personal stories of ways in which this has been a, a challenge for them. And so I think, again, I mean, talking about community earlier, I ask people, I ask my community in my voiceover community questions about all kinds of contracts and potential gigs I'm looking at where conversations with clients, like talking to people, does this seem right? What should I ask for? And if they're not going to give you what you ask for in a way that feels safe, like as Simone is saying that you are protected, please don't do it because you're hurting. It's about all of us, right? Like we, we say no, <laughs> we say, we say yes. And we say no in the ways that um, it represents all of us and people um, and it benefits the community when you do that. So just um, throwing that out there. Um, do, uh, okay, Jason and Simone, do you, either of you have experience recording synthetic voices for a voice bank and making money off of it? Like have, has that, is that a thing <laughs> happening? Well, we, neither of us have done that, but we do yeah. know people that are doing that. Um, for example, well, I don't know if we can say, but no, we can't say we, we we can't say the name. Yeah, but I we know we know people that are doing it for for many different reasons. I mean, there are people that are doing it for, for example, they want to just get in on this new market and and they'd like to be players in 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 this new technology. We know people that are worried about losing their voice and they just want to have a way to work. I I talked to a voiceover talent who's he's got this whole scheme where he's gonna do a, a, a you know an ai version of his voice and say look if you want me it costs this much but if you only got that much and i can do it too but it's going to be me and ai and i'll edit it for you so there's a lot of different ways that people can approach this technology but again it's all it all just comes down to just having like you were saying siobhan just trusting that you're with a a, a group that's going to use this for the right reasons it's all very transparent and making sure you're covered, you know, contract wise and, and what you've committed to that. It's something that, you know, cause we, we get in the habit as, as voiceover talent to having a really, it's really hard to turn down work, you know? Yeah. But uh, talking about the voice assistant for a bank, mm -hmm. it was a case. Uh, so Erica was commenting about Bev standing that what happens with her help it, uh, the whole community. Yes. She, I totally agree. Right. Erica. And now she works with, a synthetic voice but in another approach and she's earning money so bad standing yeah, is a sure. good example yeah you know for everybody but um they contact me to do a voice assistant for a bank but they wanted me in that case a specific case they wanted me just to be the voice of the bank and totally exclusivity not odd non-job so i said no yeah because it will be a 10 year contract and I I wouldn't be able to, to record anything else. So I didn't want to do that. So you have to think about and each each situation is different because uh, it's new for the clients too. So uh, the, um, we have to, to think case by case. Yeah, and, and be patient with it because it, it is, it's the new shiny thing. You know, it's like David was saying with these it, things change. We've been, we were really, really involved with the metaverse for several years. And especially during the pandemic where everyone just figured that suddenly everyone was gonna be, you know, hanging out virtual chats the rest of the, their lives. But because of the community idea, the family idea, the human connection, um, it's there, it's it's an evolution, it's technology that's still growing, but it's not, it's not something that everyone just ran to and, and is using all the time anymore. And I think I, I have a feeling that's going to happen with AI too. I think the, the virtual voices and all of everything that's happening is going to continue to evolve, but we need to be there as actors and professionals to give it the material it needs to work. And we need to be there to make these connections with our clients, to understand what the clients are looking for, and to really, you know, offer the 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 whole service that we do as professionals. It's not just about your voice, it's it's so much more than that. Well, and I, I'll, well, okay, first of all, reminder of myself that I want to hang out in the metaverse with Jason and Simone because I have an Oculus. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but secondly, um, you know, I, 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 it, I actually, it's, this is, it ties into another question from Lydia saying, you know, um, and, and I think Terry, I think a lot of people are talking about this in, in the chat is like, 
What do you think about handing over complete control of how your voice is going to be used and where it's going to be used and that they can alter it in any way they wish as per their contracts? Like, is that something, first of all, let me be totally, because I don't know. Is that something that's actually happening? Question mark, right? Like, is that a thing or is that the fear or, you know, David, let's start there. Yeah. Can you jump in here? What do you think of all this? Yes, David. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to put my, my thoughts together on this one. <laughs> There's a few things that I've been thinking about. I, I just want to step back just for a moment. I was reminded of something that happened many years ago, that maybe 15, probably 10, 15 years ago, a lot of companies started farming out voice acting work overseas where they could hire voice actors for pennies. And it was really inexpensive for the clients. And it was a concern of ours because um, more of the like telephony type work was going overseas. This may have even been even 20 years ago. I'm not sure. And, um, but eventually enough people complained and those jobs came back to the States um, where voiceover could be recorded without accents and dialect. And it was just, the speech was more decipherable um, by the American population. Um, obviously, I'm not putting down accents uh, or anything of the sort, but it was tough in the States because the voices were difficult to use. And so reflecting back to something you said, Jason, just about two minutes ago now, um, how this is, yeah, this is new and uh, and the shiny thing. I think that it's, it's, it, it's an attraction for clients to use an AI voice and try it out. But I, I don't know. I still think that that human component, that, that human authenticity is just going to win over. But the other thing I was thinking about, something else you said, uh, Simone, you're talking about uh, giving five different takes on something. I don't know how you would do that with an AI voice. Like if a client wants five takes of a tagline or something, how how would you do that? I don't even know. Hmm. But it's not, it's not natural. You know, you can stress a word or you can stress the other, you can do it faster or... But it's not natural, you know. It, yet it's not natural. It's so, not, not like the well, human. Just... Yeah. I just want to say that Lydia chimed in that this was from a real contract. I think she must have experienced um, a contract in which they were basically saying they could alter the voice through AI in, in whatever way they wish. What do you guys think of that, Jason and Simone? Can I? Yeah, <laughs> it's so hard, you know, like I told, I love technology. I work with technology too, but as a voice actor, I'll be honest with you. I don't want my voice to be used in uh, social media, recording videos and saying things that I don't want to say, you know, because every, every work that I accept to do. I, I, I read this script before, <laughs> you know, I'm old school, maybe, I don't know. I want to, I want to, my, my voice be connected to good stuff, you know, to, to, I don't, I don't record for cigarettes, you know, I personally don't record for, uh, como é agrotóxico? Fertilizers. Fertilizers. Um, I, I don't record fertilizer, but n not the natural ones, the. Yeah, like weed killer things like that. Yeah, the things that ki can kill you. You know, I don't record that. I don't. I don't. Rec I don't record for politics. So if I lose the control of my voice, my voice can be used in every of these things. And so for me, it's difficult. You know, um, just give away my voice to a like um, Alexa or or other like this. For me, it's very difficult. I. I for me, but it's just very personal. Right. I don't know tomorrow, but today is very hard for me. Word. Yeah. Jason. Yeah. I agree. I agree one hundred percent. I mean, I won't. I mean, even little jobs. You know, I wouldn't sign a contract saying I'm going to do a tagline and they can use that tagline on anything they ever do in their life. You know, the company wants. I wouldn't let them do that. I would demand that every time they use it, I be paid. I would need to know where it's going to be paid. So the idea of just like giving your voice away for anything, it right. would. Have, if you're doing like Alexa or one of these big jobs, you think that the company is going to do the right thing because it's a it's a well known company and you you're very 
conscious of how it's going to be used. But the trick is, is when you're doing something that you're not really sure what it's going to be, and you're giving them enough material that they could use your voice for anything, and then you're signing a contract saying that they could basically just do what they want with it, then you're you're going to run into trouble for sure. But they can use the voice of Alexa to say things that the yeah, sure. The voice people actor... do that all the time. Yeah, but then people understand that in the context. That... Understanding the context, but not, uh, from now on, it will be so difficult. You know. I'm talking about the reality that we live now, but voice cloning is going to be more often uh, than we realize, right. you know, with a little uh, recording of our own, they can clone our voices and they can make scams. So, you know, it we it will be more uh, common, more... Yeah, there's going to I mean, there's going to be a big adjustment in society in the next few years, because it's like we've been talking about. This isn't happening just with voiceover. I mean, you don't know. I mean, with images now, you with with pictures, you, you don't know if that's a real picture. You don't know if that person in that picture is a real picture or a real person, you know, videos, you know, with these deep fakes that that, that are happening. So I think people these days are just so tuned into this idea that they don't know what's real. And that's that's a big question, you know, for society. So it's going to affect the voiceover industry for sure. But it's going to be affecting, you know, the creative industry, marketing and, and advertising, everything that we work with in a big, big way, even, you know, with scripts and texts. And so we've been trying to use it to our advantage. And there's a lot of things out there that, you know, not, that are not just voice related. I've been using, for example, Simone was in an event the other day, and it was the first time since I've been recording Simone that I was actually, you, I used AI to do a pickup. She recorded using Twisted Wave on her cell phone, sent it to me, and I used a, an app called Hush, H-U-S-H, and it basically just ran it through AI, and it made it sound so close to what I had recorded in the studio that with the music bed, it worked. And I'd never been able to get that close to my source material with in such a bad environment. So that was AI helping me again in, in you know, in a way that I didn't expect. Jason didn't describe well the bad environment. I was in a newsroom um, place in an event called Rio to See in Rio de Janeiro. I was como que a, a, a cocorada no chão. Yeah, I mean, it just, you know, had background noise and she was with a people lot of and, and it was on her cell phone. And so, but it was using a twist. It wasn't using the voice, you know, the app on their cell phone. It was using Twisted Way, but still it was on a cell phone and it worked. So there's just going to be so many big changes coming out. And and I think that we we do, do need to be very, very careful about everything. But on the other hand, play with it. See what's, you know, see what you can do is see if there's any way that it can help you build your business if you're using chat gbt to send out a news you know the first draft of a newsletter then you kind of tweak it to make it more you but do things you haven't been doing before with this technology and that'll make you more familiar with it and then you'll be able to have a, a better conversation with your clients about what it can do and what it can't do ellen said keep perfecting your craft for sure yeah and absolutely all the human ways you can I'd like to say something just so we don't forget, but I'm trying real hard not to read the chat while we're on this call, but my eyes are being drawn to it. There's a lot of interesting information. Yeah, You can all download the chat. And I want to tell you in a moment how to download the chat. First, I want to say that when this meeting closes, that chat is gone. Totally gone. Unless you watch this video on YouTube, which we will post it to our YouTube channel. But if I you want to download the chat, I'm sorry, what, Siobhan? chat isn't on youtube it, oh it's it, not no it's just the video it's just our faces oh that's interesting wow no then even more yeah. reason to download the chat um mm -hmm. so at the end of this call uh siobhan or, or one of us can tell you how to down, down, uh, download the chat make sure you download the chat if you want to keep it like again once we end the call it's gone it's really gone then wow we'll interesting we'll download it it's really gone. Yeah, we have it, but you know, but then it goes, it, it goes away too. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess, you know, so already this hour, it always does, but especially with these two, it was like, for sure, going to go by super fast. But so I think, you know, I, I guess like we've talked a little bit about how to communicate with clients. Um, 
potential clients, um, ways in which we can learn from this technology. And I think um, one thing I just want to add for myself is like, it's not just us, right? Like the writing world, the visual arts world, right? Like all creative people are dealing with this together. So it is, we are not alone in figuring out how we can learn and grow from this and incorporate this and move forward with positivity and confidence while also protecting ourselves and our community from, you know, I mean, like the biggest fear is like, do people just want to like be cheap? And like, for me, I think it's like, do people just want to be cheap and like, you know, um, pay a rope, not use a robot because they don't want to pay a human. Right. And it's our job, you know, as it is our job to sell ourselves to, um, to sell what is, you know, what it is about the self that, that, that really works since we're in terms of marketing and, um, internal, you know, corporate trainings and all those things that we do as people, <laughs> right. In all of this. So I guess like with that and everybody who's here tonight, you all are smart and wonderful. Bye, Caitlin. Thanks for being here with us. Um, you you have fantastic things to say. I mean, I, I think the ACX question has been answered in the chat with Terry talking about like, if ACX, I mean, I guess so I'll start Jason and Simone. Um, do you know of, you know, like companies like ACX or voiceover companies that are putting forward specific protections for voice actors regarding AI? That's part one. And then part two is just any future, any last thoughts on moving forward um, in a positive, confident way? I think that's what I want to say. Well, you know, you know, people that are working vocal ID, for example. Vocal ID, yeah. <laughs> Rupo. Rupo is doing a, a great job. And, and see what Bev is doing, too. Because Bev and Ganguza. Yeah. I think a lot of these, I think what's happening is a lot of people are realizing that this is going to be a sustainable business model. They need to do it right. You know, you need to, they need us as much as, as their clients need them. And so they're trying to figure out a way for this to be done transparently where everyone gets kind of the, their fair, you know, everyone understands what they're doing, what their role is, and, you know, if they're getting their fair share of that. So that's, you know, that transparency is, is really important. They are not producing the device actors that I, I told you. They they are not producing. They are working for other companies that are doing that. Mm. You know, like Vocal ID, I I know Rupo, but she's uh, Vocal ID was sold to uh, um. It's not Vocal ID. Oh, yes, right. It's, she's uh, changed the name. Changed the name. It's. We'll find out. Yeah, but it's Rupo Patel. Uh, Jake, answer. I will. I uh, will look for, for. And I think just to kind of sum up with the last com your last question about uh, moving forward, I think it it kind of goes back to where we started with this whole idea of fear and and fear. The only way to conquer fear is to face your fear. So the more that you can understand AI, what it can do, what it can't do, use it, play with it, get in these programs and play with your voice. I was really, uh, you know, like changing my voice really changed my reads in a sense and so it ge it's giving me new tools and it's really when you really dive in it really exposes its limitations and mm -hmm. i think that's nice because you realize that a lot of the fear just comes out of this like this idea of what it could do but it's not what it can do and mm -hmm. so so yeah play with it look at it you know learn about it talk about it and and have fun with it you know and and I'm sure that in, in two years we'll be whatever format in two years we'll be doing to talk to each other, but we'll be talking about some new technology that's going to kill us all. That we're, <laughs> but... okay. Jay, remember in a good way, in a positive way. Positive, a positive. yeah. Come on, Jay. <laughs> that can, can I? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's, yeah, I'll try. It's, it's very toned, the company that she's working on. Very, yes. very toned. But okay. You know, as David uh, told in the beginning of the session, he's not worried. Uh, and I'm not worried too. You know, I think we have to, like we are, it's, it will be a challenge and, and, and embrace, we have to embrace the, the, the new things. We have to study. We have to understand what are 
what they are talking about. What is what is AI? What is generative AI? What's different? What what you know? In order not to fear this, you have to understand what it, what they are. They are tools. They can help us too, you know. So learn how they can help us. Learn to protect yourself. I should, like Siobhan said, told us, you have to protect yourself. You have to use the community. We are here in a community. You have to use the community as an advantage. Ask your friends. You're not alone. Yeah. You know, we yeah. are stronger together. We're we're not alone. We have to to to, to you know this. Uh, ask me anything. It's so special, you know, because you know it's a community. We are passing for through this uh, this situation together. Nobody knows the answer, but we know that what we can do now, we can study, we can improve our talents, we can develop, we can talk to each other, we can uh, strong our, the relationship with our, with our community. This is a wonderful community, and defend ourselves and defend our. Uh, vice over colleagues to our craft right? our craft yeah. we are artists and we have to protect ourselves and defend ourselves but not not, not the way not uh in a rage way you know like like say well like we are so confident that we do it's it's a good so we don't we we don't need to be defensive or as as ted lasso says don't <laughs> fight back fight forward i love that Ooh. i love that we love Ted Lasso. We Ted love, Lasso. Yeah, we love yeah, Ted Lasso. Yeah. Ted Lasso is <laughs> pink. It's a, show. it's a show if you don't know. <laughs> it is a very good show. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take this moment to segue in terms of community and conversation. Um, Edge Studio is offering a new special, which I'm dropping a link in the chat for, which is a consult with David Goldberg here with us tonight. At a new um, time frame of 30 minutes for a super affordable price point of $50. And this price point allows you to have an open conversation with David for a smaller amount of time because you all just need to get your questions answered, have the conversation. Um, we want to make this accessible to people. We want to allow folks to have the opportunity to have these more personal discussions without the larger price point of a, of an overall private coaching session here at Edge Studio. And with that, I mean, we've already hit late into the night for some of us, but some of us, I mean, me and like, I know some of y'all are here, but anyway, okay. So to that end, um, David, is there anything else you want to say that we haven't covered yet tonight as we wrap up our evening? Um, any thoughts, feelings, letters of resignation? Just kidding. You <laughs> um, are still yeah. here. <laughs> well, just a quick quick note to everyone, the uh, $50 consults, that's done. So if you guys want like demos reviewed, our website looked at, your marketing plan examined, your, you want to talk what your rate card should be or your business is just, it's a time that you and I can sit down and chat. Uh, I thought I love this call tonight. This was great. Um, I'm so happy that we had this discussion. I still trying to sort of read this, the, uh, the, the uh, texts coming in, in the chat, but I will download it and read it later. Uh, Simone, Jason, Siobhan, you guys made it amazing. And all of your questions, everyone, uh, everyone out there, thank you so much for tuning in and staying with us. Uh, it's always a pleasure. And if you guys are not familiar with our home studio show and tell, that's another free a freebie we have. Um, that is the, what is it, Siobhan? The first Tuesday of the month, I think. It sure that, is. First that is the coolest, coolest event. And I believe that Jason, you're going to be, or Jason maybe in Simone, maybe both of you, I'm not sure, will be down, showing your studio. I know Erica, who is on this call, showed her studio about two months ago. Uh, home studio show and tell is just a time when two voice actors give a informal tour of their studio and everyone else asks questions and shares ideas. And it is super cool. Um, so I want to make that a note because, uh, you know, Simone and Jason's studio will be showcased. Thank you so much, David. Yes. And so that will be June 6th uh, at the same time. And I, don't ask me what time it is because I don't know what time it is right now, but I think it's at um, 9 p.m. Eastern. Thank you, David. Eastern. So don't everyone. We're all responsible for our own time zones, even when we travel. Um, so there's that. And then, uh, yes, the chat. 
everyone. Yeah, please. I went to the, yeah. <laughs> you're on Zoom. For those of you who aren't okay Zoomers like myself, um, what you're going to do on desktop is go to the uh, ellipses. It's the um, it's the it's the most right uh, section at the bottom of the chat. And at, you, when you click that at the top of it, it says save chat. And then you just save it. And I will tell you, it saves it in a plain text um, file. It is not like cute or attractive, but it's got all the good stuff in there. So if you want to keep, you know, keep the voices alive from the evening. Otherwise, our dear Josh Wise at Edge Studio will be posting this recording on um on YouTube, on our Edge Studio channel on YouTube. And so we'll be back on June 6th. Um, as Monique said, we did not, um, she's not a plant. She literally just said, you know, um, $50, 30 minutes, David Goldberg is a steal. So you might want to get in on that, just saying. And in the meantime, um, everyone. Thank you for coming here tonight. It's really great to see you all. Um, I appreciate this space so, so much. And I'm so grateful for your time and energy. Oh my gosh, Terry uh, is the best. Jackie, your hair looks so good. Erica, we love you. It's great to see you and have you in our space. Um, thank you all so much for being here. And um, thank you, Jason and Simone, again, they've been a big part of the Edge family for many years. Um, and I, it's a privilege and a pleasure to have you both. So um thanks thank everyone you. we love yeah. to be part of this wonderful family thank you so much for having us i am honored to have you guys part of the family oh my gosh okay well we're all going to get a cavity now so um <laughs> before we have a dentist appointment um everyone <laughs> be well see you at the, at the um the next session of the home studio show until on the 6th and then ask me anything will be on the 15th of june and let's not talk about how it's already summer okay <laughs> Sweet dreams. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.